Welcome back. This is CSE 220 Intro to Cybersecurity. Today is the 9th of September. It is Monday. At the end of this week, it'll be Friday the 13th. Ooh. More on that later. What I'd like to do is do something a little different today. It is clear to me that some have not completed the network solution for your home environment. Well, because there may be some complexities in the mix. And so today what we're going to do is conduct what we call quick and dirty Wi-Fi network review. A quick and dirty Wi-Fi network review. And much of this is going to be on the hardware level. Some of it's going to be on the like layer two, layer three level. If uh, that's a little fuzzy for you, you don't have to freak out. But uh, here we go. Um, let me update our attendees. And... If somebody else comes in while we're doing the slideshow, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of capture that for a sec. All right. So this is the back side of a, oh, yes, just as I start. So most Wi-Fi routers for home and small business use are referred to as small office, home office routers. They're kind of borderline professional network equipment and and then there's consumer grade wi-fi routers which are intentionally designed for a residential environment and often have gaming features and share your media features you know connect a usb and turn it into a network attached storage where you can share media kind of thing so it's sort of media media center in orientation or entertainment and gaming in orientation, right? So you get different flavors, but essentially they all work in a very similar manner. Can everyone see this screen? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So if you are joining us in CSC 220 without the benefit of CSC 243, the networking and digital communications course, then what we're going to do here is kind of conduct a quick refresher. If you send an email, I can actually upload some handy references from that course, the networking course. It's a short read and it's got self-drawn diagrams like this. Not that I'm a Picasso or anything, but uh, some of these diagrams you'll never find in a textbook, and I'm kind of hoping that they'll really cover a lot of concepts and methods um, in a relatively short period of time. So where were we? Oh, yeah, Wi-Fi routers, different flavors, borderline professional, Soho, small office, home office versus residential media center, gaming kind of thing. Many way you slice it, it's called an all-in-one, all-in-one, A-I-O, all-in-one network device because it has a router, a hardware router, which is usually associated with what they call a WAN or internet port. It's the single port with a different color. And if you've looked at the back of your Wi-Fi router, you're probably nodding your head now going, mm, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. And then to the right of that are a bunch of other ports, um, different color, kind of a cluster together. Those are the local area network or internal hardwired ports. And those would be referred to as a switch. So that's an ethernet switch which has built-in security measures to isolate traffic on each port for each device. And the packets that are intended for a given device on a given port are isolated from the other ports. They do not share the bandwidth of the local network. So 
performance is better, the security is better, what's not to like, well, you can still hack the hell out of it. I'd like to return for a second to the router, even though it's one physical interface. What's often confused about an all-in-one device is that the one internet port is actually two interfaces in one. Now it doesn't look that way, but we overlay on top of the physical single port an outbound network interface or a port. It's called the inside interface. On the data link layer, it's the inside interface and stuff inside the local network has to go through it to the outside. By the same token, kind of the flip side of the coin, on the outside of that WAN physical port is what's referred to as the outside interface. It is an identity on the IP network that is public. It's not private inside like this, but it's outside and essentially the no, public network network. and the internet resources have to enter through the sure external or outside interface yeah. and that's virtual uh kevin you got a question or is that raheem somebody's got a hot mic no that wasn't me i, th I think he muted okay all right well thank you for muting um, so essentially what's happening is that there's an outside or external interface and there's an inside or internal interface and there's the nasty public internet out here, the wild, wild west. And on the inside is the cool, calm, collected pond of your local inside home interface, your inside home network, but it's a single physical port. And that can be kind of confusing because the physical shows just a single port, but the connection to the outside internet is virtualized so that it's split in half. When you have traffic from the inside that's going out to the internet, that's called the egress or exit traffic, outbound traffic. Everybody get, get that? Egress, yeah. E for egress, E for exit, outbound. And the outbound traffic hits the inside interface. Hello. Notice my words. The outbound traffic hits the inside interface before it passes through that physical barrier. And then, woohoo, it's passed along or handed off to the exit, the outside interface. The same thing is true on the outside. It's kind of confusing, but. The inbound traffic or ingress traffic, in for inbound, in for ingress, that traffic hits the external interface, not the internal interface. So when we're setting up a firewall for the nasty stuff out here, are we setting up a firewall on the external interface or the internal interface? If we want to block traffic from the outside, it's inbound. What's it going to hit first? External. External. So we're setting up firewall rules on the external side. And this is terribly confusing for a lot of people. There's also firewall rules on the inbound side that you can set up so that you can block stupid traffic from going out so that, I don't know, like a family member doesn't get you in trouble with the FBI because they're bootlegging movies and they have it on a file share utility like uh, LimeWire or they're doing BitTorrent and all that crap, okay? Everybody with me so far? Yeah. Now here's the really fun part. Are you ready for the really fun part? Here's the Wi-Fi. Yeah. I haven't talked about anything that has to do with radio or Wi-Fi yet. Everything I've talked to you about to this point is all hard cable and physical, all right? But the Wi-Fi antennas are actually radio antennas and they emanate the same basic frequency as the microwave you use in your kitchen to cook potatoes <laughs> and to nuke other things. 2.4 gigahertz I'm talking about. And that's why if you have an old clunky 
microwave in your kitchen and it's anywhere near like your Wi-Fi router. And every time you fire it off to cook popcorn or bake a potato, that kind of thing, if your internet starts to lag, what's happening is that the microwaves are stepping on these antennas and squelching them or washing them out. It's called jamming, radio frequency jamming. Might have heard of that before. Okay, so what's really cool and scary at the same time is that back in the day when they first started with networking, they set up another kind of cable connectivity, cable device. It was called a hub, a network hub. And that network hub was stupid. It was basically a multi-port repeater. So anything anybody was saying here was repeated to all the other clients that were connected and vice versa, which meant that instead of conserving the bandwidth, they were stepping on each other. They were kind of in each other's Kool-Aid. And did you know that Wi-Fi is basically a hub? Anything you broadcast out of here to a Wi-Fi device, it's in the same vicinity physically as any other Wi-Fi device, which means the Wi-Fi part of this all-in-one device is worse than the wild, wild west. Worse by far than the internet, the public out here where there's lions and tigers and bears. No, the Wi-Fi part in your own home is actually the scariest, hairiest, nastiest, most exposed portion of the whole enchilada. And the sad part is, is that nobody knows this, really, not intuitively. But why do you think I have an asterisk, asterisk by the one? You should, you should cover your asterisks with your networking. And you should start with which item? Number one. Okay? All right. Mm -hmm. How are we doing so far? Any questions, comments, observations? No. I, th I think I got it so far. Okay. It gets interesting. It gets even more interesting now. Okay. So some of you, now I know this is backwards, so sorry about the, uh, the graphic here. And you know what? In the interest of, uh, in the interest of not, missing somebody here i'm going to pause for just a second so i can update the uh update the roster right there we go i'm back to you now all right everybody with me yep so here's the problem with the solution i have learned for half of you you don't have just one router you're working with from what i've learned from half of you because you haven't submitted yet and i've been sending little nasty grams saying ah, turn it in get it in get it done you're gonna miss credit if you don't get it done soon i'm getting interesting emails back actually very fascinating emails and what we started talking about on friday is this this um kind of one two punch and what I've found is that consumers that want better, they go out and they buy their own Wi-Fi router. Now, this thing provided by the service, this is just one example of one type of service router. There are different types of service router. But in this case, this is a popular brand and it's used for cable-based internet. Via would happen to have cable-based internet in a lot of places in our territory, okay? And here's the thing. There's kind of a mishmash of terms, and I want you to understand that there are two, basically, how many did I say? Well, I'll no, I'll take that back. Three. There's three different ways to hook up your Wi-Fi router, and here's what happens with most people. They're so excited, they get this faster, better, bigger Wi-Fi thingy from the store or from Amazon and, and they take it out and it has this little diagram and they hook up a cable and then they go through a wizard 
on an app or on their laptop and they click, click, bang, and they're done. Tell me if you haven't like watched this happen. Yeah. In a home or a neighborhood near you, right? In a theater near you. Now here's the problem. You may or may not be doing yourself a favor. And this is something I desperately want to share. And you are actually the first CSC 220 class that has received this specific orientation. Call it a critical mass, if you will, but there are more students in this class than there ever have been before. I've got the highest enrollment this year, which is very exciting to me. It's like, wow, we're really getting up there. You know, we have a we have a quite a few students in our class. And there are more that are joining us after hours asynchronously, but I digress. Here's the deal. If you use one mode of connection, what you're doing is you're following a wizard or a guide and it says something like, oh, go to your service router and put it in bridged mode or bypass mode, bridged or bypass, think B or B, bypass mode. And what that does is it kind of performs a lobotomy. It sort of sticks a steel rod into the brain of this router and it just scrambles it all around. And it makes this a dumb device that just passes traffic to and from. That's all it does. So any of the security features that are in here, any of the configuration settings that could save your exposed behinds, your exposed backsides from the bad, bad, wild, wild west, um, those are like taken offline. And it's passed instead to this new Wi-Fi router. And you're supposed to put this thing in bridged mode. No, not in bridge mode. In router mode. Router mode which means you're going this way. You're taking advantage of the router and the router is actually active. So the router is what's handling the traffic to and from the internet on that Wi-Fi device, instead of that being handled on your first device. Okay, everybody with me? Yeah. Okay, now here's the fun part. Are you ready for the fun part? Oh, there are times. Well, no, no, no. No, no, no. Let's keep going. There's a second way to do this. So let's talk about the second way to do this. And that is, let's say you get a bargain Wi-Fi unit, or you just, by luck of the draw, you get a, whiz, a setup wizard that's kind of, God, it's kind of too simple. And it asks you some quick questions. You don't really understand the context. You click the wrong button. And what you do is your service router is left the way it is. It has the brains and the brawn. It has the firewall. It does the routing. And this thing, well, it's put in access point mode. It's put in, it's put in wireless access point mode. Sometimes it's called access point. Sometimes it's called wireless access mode. Sometimes it's called bypass mode. Or with really like, weird feature sets. It'll say, um, you're connecting this to another uh, Wi-Fi unit, because there's Wi-Fi built in here, by the way. There's antennas that are embedded inside here and you just can't see them, right? There's antennas inside this, there's antennas. So you have antennas here, you have antennas there, you just can't see the antennas in here. Does everybody get that? Yeah. 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 So this is the brains and the brawn, and then this is put in bypass mode or the wizard says, oh, you have another router. Maybe it's the mothership for mesh. You should consider putting it in mesh mode. And unless this has a mesh mode on this side, mm, yeah, it might work, it might not. It's kind of weird, but what's the result on this side? Oh, it's like putting a steel rod in the brains of this processor and scrambling the eggs and screwing up the gray matter. So this is pretty much just passing Wi-Fi traffic onto everything in your local neighborhood, which means the real security is really happening here instead of here. Now, what that means is, what that means is in that mode, the Wi-Fi router instead isn't doing any of this right here. No, no, no. 
no, 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 that's not part of it. Oh, but then we'll talk about the really screwed up version, the double natted version. Somebody remind me, we want to talk about the third out in left field, OMG, what were you thinking version in just a minute. But in that second configuration, it's most common because it's wizard driven and the manufacturers don't want you to hurt yourself. You, what you're doing is connecting your service router to this and it's part of the local cabled connection and it's part of a local ethernet and then the Wi-Fi goes out the antennas. But basically you're connecting the internet to the, outs to the outside device. And then from there, it goes out to the outside of the internet. So your outside router from the service provider, it's a handoff, right? So there's no security, there are no measures, there's no firewall, there's no brains, there's no security measures and lockdowns you can apply with all the feature set. And here's the sad part, okay? Here's the sad part, which is better? Well, that depends. And we'll get back to that in a minute. One thing you don't wanna do, I want everybody to hear what I'm saying. One thing you wouldn't wanna do is to take the bridged router mode for the first one, and then take this and hook up the, the internet port on this to a local internet port on that, and you leave this in bridged mode and you leave that in bridged mode. And believe it or not, there are scenarios and there are actually diagrams that suggest this for certain conditions. But to recap, it's kind of like a bottleneck. Instead of getting really nice, fast, smooth, hot, secure service, it's like you have a router here. Oh, wait a minute. And it passes out to a local internal network, which is what? Oh, oh, but this is another router, which is in turn passed into the, uh, it's a, the external port. And then now there's a, there's a, a router and there's another, oh, there's another internal network. So now we have, hey, Wi-Fi here, and we have separate Wi-Fi here, and we have NAT here, network address translation to the inside here. And then, oh my gosh, we have another layer of network address translation going on here. And to make matters worse, if it's really stupid, we have Wi-Fi at a certain frequency here and Wi-Fi at a certain frequency there or channel, and they're stepping on each other. And people are like, this sucks. I don't like this brand. I don't know what's going on. But it's bridged mode to bridged mode. No, I'm sorry. It's router mode to router mode. And what happens is that if you're not... Now, this can be very good, can be, if it's configured properly. But you have to get the brains and the brains talking, and there's a lot of extra overhead. Now let's get back to the basic question. I turn things back to you, Bob. Hey, Ted, tell us which mode is better. Is it the first mode where this one's got the brains and that one's just kind of passing traffic? Or is it better if you bought the brand new thing and like that one should be in brains mode, router mode, and this should be in bridged or bypass mode. Which mode is better? Which mode? Oh, come on. We don't have any takers? Brains. Which one's better? I would, I would assume it depends. That's an excellent answer, and here's why. Let's pretend that you've been using the same internet service provider for a very long, long, long time. And this cable modem right here has been in your home for many, many years. And let's say that this is a latest, greatest AX, or even better, the new Wi-Fi 6, the new Wi-Fi 6A, the new Wi-Fi 7. Oh my gosh, it slices, it dices. Oh, the bandwidth is like 10 times faster. And 
It has artificially intelligent firewall and intrusion detection options and reverse proxy and bandwidth control for certain types of traffic. Oh, wow. Well, here's the thing. If you get all that goody right here, but you put this in lobotomized mode, that is not the better way to do it. If that's the case, the mode where this one is the brains in router mode and this one is bypass mode, that is what you need to do. And that assumes that you're hooking up the cable between these two correctly so you don't end up double natted. No, you don't want to be double natted. You don't want to be double natted. And believe it or not, there are some gaming forums where they deal with double natting and they have some really crazy, stupid, did I say crazy, stupid? Yeah, crazy, stupid workarounds that you should never do unless you want to be thought of as the poster child for crazy, stupid in your network on the internet, on the island. You get what I'm saying, right? You, you don't, yeah. if any of you have done stuff for your gaming, you're going to want to lean in and pay attention and you're going to want to check on some things on the sideline. And it's okay to like send me an email and say, hey, Professor Kentop, could you just like, let me just check things out here with you because I want to make sure I'm not like, okay, I think my gaming was really bad because I might have been double natted and everything was like really slow because it was misconfigured. And what I want to do is like clean slate this whole mess and do it right. Now, what about the other mode? Let's pretend that you complain to your service provider. Has anybody ever done that? I've complained about it, but not like actually to it. Let's pretend that uh -huh. you do your homework and you find out that this eight-year-old modem is no longer supported. It has outdated firmware and it's actually exposed. And your service sucks. So you call up your service provider and you say, hey, I've had this thing longer than I can remember. And every time you do support, I'm good for a day or so. And then my bandwidth stinks again. I'll tell you what, you can come out here and you can put a new router in here. Or we can cancel our service. It's up to you. And what they'll do is they'll roll out. And if they provide a better router or... They tell you you can buy one that's better. Either way, if you get a recent replacement with newer features, here's the other flip side of that. Let's say you have a parent in your home. Now, I'm not picking on parents, but a matriarch or a patriarch, they work hard for their money. They can't afford to waste stuff. And who fixes what ain't broke? Am I preaching to the choir? Who goes out and buys like a $100 Wi-Fi router? Oh, no, they're not $100. Did we forget? Some of these are like $200, $300, $400 now. You can still get a $100 one, but you have to really shop around. The point is, is who's going to whip out all those Benjamins if they don't need to? So who's the stingy frugal one? Oh, this is the, this is the Achilles heel because it's been in your home for six, eight, 10, may I say 12 years. True story, last season we had a student and I discovered on the sidelines with them that they had one of these and it was like 13 years old and they had a new service router. And I was like, I got a spare in my office, just come and get it. Cause I, I can't even sleep at night thinking about what's gonna happen to you and yours if you don't do something, okay? So which mode is better? Well, that depends. Which of these is better? Now, in an ideal world, would you put up with a service provider you're paying so much money every month, every month, every month, and they gave you like an, a six-year-old dog and it's it needs to retire, right? Wouldn't it be better? Yeah, that's pretty had, bad. I mean, wouldn't it be better if you had a current router with supported firmware and then you also had, like if the Wi-Fi signal needed to be extended, you had something that was capable over here? See, and then you do the mesh thing where you're like, they're kind of teaming together. So it's peer-to-peer -peer networking in a sense. That's a complex topic and mesh networking is a newer technology. And in the interest of time, I don't want to get into the weeds on that. But the point is, is 
you can do mesh instead of doing router mode, router mode, double NAT. Ah! Right? Okay. So, and speaking of firmware, did you know there's firmware on these things? So if some of you are having problems accessing one device or another, it could be because of the way it's configured. And what I can do is I can consult with you. And now that you're now that you've been read into the better ways of doing this, if you want, you can share this video with your folks at home if they're part of the decision making process. And you can tell them that a certified network guy, a certified systems engineer, a guy who's like built network backbones and set up data centers over a four day holiday weekend from scratch kind of guy could come in and pop, pop, plug, plug, click, click. You'd, you'd have a whole different ball game. Oh my gosh, you're really getting 80, 100 megs of bandwidth a second. Oh, my TV's finally in 4K mode and it's not glitching in and out of this kludgy, nasty, blurry junk all the time. And it doesn't take me a, an hour to download anything, right? Just saying. But why else am I willing to do this? Because I don't want you exposed to kingdom come. Because I want you to take advantage of the principles of security and the whole point of this first module is to prevent you from becoming the very poster child this course is designed to prevent right at the end of this course you're supposed to be bigger badder more knowledgeable and not susceptible to the hacker and what we're discovering is that well there's a lot of misinformation out there not by any fault of yours not by any fault of ours People just don't know, but now you know. Now, I will also say this. If you do your homework, having heard this presentation and you have something exotic or different and you take screenshots and pictures and you're like, hey, I did this, I did that, we talked about it, it just won't work, it's stuck. Depending on how exotic it is, if you submit that for your solution, you may earn additional credit, not just full credit, but you'll, you'll post the whole enchilada and then some. And that's because it's good for me to add to my repertoire an inventory of, wow, I didn't think you could connect to devices like this, but hey, it must be a thing in the Caribbean, right? I mean, and that's the case. I mean, there are cases where there are just unique ways to do things here in the Caribbean. And who am I to question that? Praise the Lord and pass the rum, right? Now, let's talk about this. There is firmware that you can do to update this. And there's also a uh, need I say, firmware also for your laptop. Now, I am talking to you from an Asus Tough 15F or something. So when I start to do the general search for BIOS, that's the firmware update. I get Asus Tough 15 BIOS update. I get some general information I can click here. And the first thing that comes up is this. It says, oh, Asus Tough Gaming F15, I'm closer. But the truth is, I actually have a specific model of that series. It's this one. It's a Zulu Romeo. It's a FX517, right? Zulu Romeo, same thing as this, basically. Which one do you suppose is the better screen to use? to download a BIOS update. The, oh, one size fits all Asus Tough Gaming F15 BIOS, or the one that's designed 
explicitly for my own individual FX517ZR. What do you think? Is it better to use the general purpose? No, I wouldn't think so. It's not. That's just common sense, right? Oh, look. There's networking updates. Oh, look. There's chipset updates on the motherboard. Oh, look. There are graphics updates, all kinds, Bluetooth updates, right? What's my point? When you're doing updates for Windows to make your thing better, faster, smarter, every now and then you should check to see if there's a new BIOS update because there are cases where you update the Windows and then it just goes fluey and it goes sideways and then people think they've been hacked or they think they've hosed their system. And, and then if it's two or three years old, what do they do? What do they do? What's their first instinct? Come on. Throw it away. Yeah, they throw it away. That's the fix it. It's like, oh, this is gone. It's like disposable, right? No. No. How much did you pay for this thing? And here's another thought for you. Would it be such a crime if you bought a more expensive model you could actually use for like eight or 10 years and it ran circles around everything and anyone for eight or 10 years and it never crashed and you never had a problem? And like every, while everybody else was sucking wind, you were just smiling. And, you know, going to the beach early, going to the club early, whatever. Just saying. You get what you pay for sometimes. That's not to say that you can't get an awful lot of muscle out of affordable systems also. So where are we going next in the time remaining? I want you to finish your solution. I want you to submit what you can. I want you to do as much as you can. And if you are going through your stuff on this level and you run into a snag while you're trying to get those screens so you can take pictures of them and it gives you an error, then I want you to capture the error and I want you to include some things you've tried to troubleshoot it or fix it. Include those things. But more than that, if you didn't set up your Wi-Fi, if you weren't the one that actually configured it and set it up, mm. I want you to have a conversation with them. I want you to show them part of this video on YouTube when I post it so that they can understand you don't want to be one or the other if this is old as dirt or that is old as dirt. And you sure don't want double NAT router router mode cross wired sideways. OMG, no wonder it's slow. No wonder we're having problems. Okay. Now, yes. I hope that that kind of fills in a lot of blanks. I hope that helps you get over the speed bumps or the potholes. I hope that by Wednesday, you'll have your solutions posted because if you don't, and I don't get emails and I don't see screenshots, by Wednesday, I'm going to post that assessment and we're going to blow right by you. And you'll be one of those people that's still trying to catch up during fall break because your midterm grade, well, it's doing about as well as your home Wi Fi. And nobody wants that. I am the first person to tell you I try to make it easy to log max credit in this course, which gets me to the next point. You have some diagrams here. This is a conceptual map of the same all-in-one. Here's the external port with the router. It just looks different. Oh, and there's a firewall right behind it. Oh, and you can designate one of those other ports on the LAN to be what's called a DMZ. So if you have a gaming network, you can isolate that bad boy or bad girl from everything else in your home environment. And then you can set up VLANs. You can do all sorts of cool things. What am I saying? You can park different users on different networks 
and you don't, well, you get the best of both worlds. The people who need faster bandwidth get the faster bandwidth. And the people who are just like playing around, yeah, they can play away to their heart's content, but they don't bring the whole house down and slow the whole house down. And that's essentially, that is part of essential security, configuring things properly per the specifications of the manufacturer. Half the time people get hacked, it's because they didn't do it, didn't know it until it was too late. Which is why I want you before our class on Wednesday to read through the study guide and the study guide addendum. And then I'm gonna blitz these things here because what I wanna do is like cherry pick the prime concepts and methods from chapter one and chapter two slides. And by the way, if you don't have the textbook and you aren't reading it, shame on you, okay? Just saying that for your own good in case you don't know, know better at this point. So here we go. Let's see if we can. Uh, slideshow, please. If you've been doing what you're supposed to be doing, and there's a, I don't know, a first assessment of module one just around the corner, you should be able to answer this question without any problem. But if you've been kind of like, you know, oh, I'm stuck. Oh, look at the time. I got other things to do. This is the week you want to get serious, lean in, and get down to business. Because I'm going to be filing reports on what you're doing and how you're doing. I am required to file reports. And if you are not submitting anything, I'm just, I'm going to go into more detail on this on Wednesday. I got to explain to you, I am required to do certain things. And you're going to get like little nasty gram emails <clears> that go, <throat> um, why haven't you attended the class? Or why are you getting such a low grade here? It says you're not turning in assignments. You're not. You have very low grades on the assessments, right? Well, nobody wants that in their inbox and nobody wants to start off on that foot. Can we all agree? Can we all agree? Are we at a point where we have an accord? Yes. All right, thank you so much. Yes. So what is security? Is it freedom from fear, protection from loss, keeping yeah. secrets, being secure, and free from I see. I say D. You say D? So if you've been reading the textbook, if you've been looking at the slides from the public, I would say B. If you've been reading the study guides, which yeah. is a summary right. of all of that, the answer is D, being secure and free from danger. Only this answer is complete. Fear has little to do with security. Many are fearful even when secure. Did you know that the reverse is true also? Here's a thought. Did you know when you're in your bunny slippers in the privacy of your living room and you're on the internet, did you know you might as well be sitting out on your patio in your underwear in front of a crowd because you're on the internet? Many people are brazenly casual and cozy when they should be afraid. They should be very, very afraid. Anyway, security does not mean losses cannot occur, just that they are planned for and survivable. Confidentiality, secrets, is just one of the three key aspects of security. So confidentiality is not a complete answer. CIA is part of how you get there. Those primary concepts are there all the time. Now, of course, we're gonna, we're gonna go over this some more, but it's going to be a lot faster and a lot easier if some of you are in the textbook on the slides and have read, read, memorized the study guide. Okay. This concludes presentation of our concepts and methods today. Does anyone have any comments or questions? Any observations? Uh, yeah. Um, which assignment are you referencing? 1.3. 1 1.3. 1 okay. Me one second. Uh, three, it's worth five points as much as your assessment. Okay. I'd Let's like go. to speak with you after class and then also, Professor. Yes. Yes, please uh, stay in session. I'm going to stop sharing and stop recording. Um, I'll be on the lookout.